Now we sing that song tonight. Only believe, only believe. tonight that you know the Lord is here the pillar of fire is here tonight to address your needs oh precious Holy Spirit Lord, we thank you again for this precious evening that we know in your word you have bid us to come tonight to come at your table that table that is spread with bread the bread of life Lord, you have taught us this morning that we are back again in Bethlehem the house of God bread and so Lord, tonight we just pray you feed us from that internal bread that the sick in the meeting tonight can be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there be people here lost, struggling with one thing or the other, Lord, I pray there will be deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you said in your word, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And Lord, we just pray this precious evening again, that you will grant deliverance to your children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm just a man. I don't know the needs of, the, of your children. But Lord, I know you are omnipotent. You are omniscience. You know their needs, Lord. So I pray tonight again, through the word, may you address their needs in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you take me out of the way and speak the word of life to your children. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the church say, Amen, amen and amen. I can be seated for a while. I'd like to um, appreciate the pastor this evening for the opportunity and the privilege given to me to be able to minister the word of God to God's children. I many of you appreciate your pastor this evening. <laughs> Amen. And do you appreciate the men of God here tonight? Appreciate them. <laughs> and you appreciate yourself as a bride of Christ. I, I don't think there's any better title than that to be called the bride of Christ. You know, you could call somebody your friend. You could call somebody your brother. Amen. But within these two class of people, you can still keep some little secrets from them. Amen. But when you come before the bride, what do you do? It's a total open up. Now, do you realize why the seventh seal, amen, is the bride seal? Amen. Because what was Christ doing? Christ was opening up the word to the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. So it's a privilege, my brother, it's a privilege, my sister, to be called God bride tonight. Amen. Amen. And so this evening, I would like to just um, speak in a little text. I will not be long tonight. I will be very short. Uh, don't be surprised if I give you a 30-minute sermon. Don't be surprised. Amen. But I believe God will speak to somebody tonight anyhow. Amen. Amen. So we'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the tonight's meeting. I believe you are under expectation. Amen. Yes, uh, I, I enjoyed the song service. God bless you, brother Victor. Amen. The Lord should bless you. You know, you know, I, I love to come to the house of the Lord to let loose. I love to come into the song service and use this long leg of mine to give glory to God. Because you see, tonight, 
That's why God created me. And that's what, why God created you. For nothing else but to worship Him. And that's why tonight's inspiration is purpose of creation. And tonight I want to speak about purpose of creation. And I believe the Lord is going to make it a blessing. Amen. Amen. Can we just stand up as we read the word? Genesis 1. Genesis, but Abraham called it the seed chapter. And you know, that ties the old scripture, you know. Amen. You go back to Genesis, you tie it down to Revelation. The pure word of God. So rich to us. Amen. Alright, before we read the scripture, I would just like us to pray. Gracious and eternal Father, blessed Lord, once again, here is the scriptures open before us. Lord, the prophet will always tell us that any man that's educated enough, intellectual enough, can pick these things and Lord can be able to read from it. But he said, life lives in the spirit of God. So I pray tonight, Lord, we'll breathe forth life upon the word again and that the hearers and even the readers of this word can live here blessed. May the scripture be fresh in our heart again that it can bring restoration, it will bring blessing, it will bring insight, it will bring inspiration for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, quickly, just to read the scripture, Genesis 1, 11 to 12. I just want to just pick some things from there. Amen. All right. Genesis 1. If you are there, say amen. amen. All right. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. Whose seed is in it itself upon the earth, and it was so. So God spoke something, and it was so. We go to 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself and after its kind and God saw that it was good. On the line that word, it was good. Alright, we move quickly to 26 to 28. Alright. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creeped upon the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it on the line that's what subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We'll quickly take 31. And God saw everything. Now, God has said the word everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Take note of that. Before the man was created, the description to God's creation was that it was good. But when God made the man, the description we see there that God said it was very good. Amen. We'll come to that. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. May the Lord have the blessings to the reading of his word. May be seated. I'd like to read more scripture from Psalm 16, 11. Psalm 16, 11. Amen. All right, now, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. I'd like to take 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 51 to 55. 1 Corinthians 15. I'll just read the scripture, just comment on them, and we can just share the grace. All right, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So you are not going to be raised corruptible. That is for those who are in Christ. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put up incorruption and this mortar must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortar shall have put on immortality 
then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory may the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word Amen and tonight we just like to talk on a little inspiration which I titled purpose for creation I titled this word purpose for creation now I would like to appreciate brother Joe who has really been doing a very good work on that message series on the danger of ignorance Amen and uh, he's talking about ignorance in the sense that when you don't know the purpose for when something is created you are ignorant of that but this morning we are speaking to this evening we are speaking to the bride of Christ I want to believe that through this little teaching on inspiration that we can know the purpose why God has created us because like a popular quote we usually know they said when the purpose of a thing is not known then the abuse is inevitable from that little inspiration we can preach so many messages spiritual amnesia identity crisis amen and that's the reason why you can see today that the church has lost its identity and that is why they begin to what to impersonate amen they are trying to be like the people of the world while the world is trying to be like the church it's a state of spiritual malady amen so what is the meaning of the word purpose now by definition got him from the oxford dictionary a purpose is defined as the reason for which something is done or the reason why it is done in a particular way amen and we see from the scripture in Isaiah 55 verse 11 can we get that scripture on the board Isaiah 55 verse 11 I just want to also look at the scriptures together amen okay let me just read okay so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void meaning that God has a reason why he will speak a word God is not just interested in speaking many words but God is interested in speaking the word of God so each time God has a cause to speak the word of God is because God wants to achieve a purpose amen so we see here that the Bible record that when God speak a word that word will not return unto me void and do you realize tonight that you are spoken word of God and if you are spoken word of God then you have a divine purpose that God has brought you here on earth to accomplish and until that purpose is achieved my brother until that purpose has been achieved by the Lord there is nothing strong enough amen that can cut you off this earth that's why you see from 1st Corinthians 50, 15 the Bible was Apostle Paul was making a comment now O death where is thy victory O death where is thy victory sorry O death where is thy sting and O grave where is thy victory amen but we have the victory in Christ Jesus so you were you were, you, you were, you were created as a being of purpose amen so a purpose we said is the reason for which something is done or the reason for which it is done in a particular way amen so God had a purpose for everything he created God had a purpose why he made you a man God had a purpose why he made you a woman God had a purpose why he made you a brother God had a purpose why he made you a sister so from the scripture we just read we realize from Genesis that God but Abraham told us that the God we serve is called the internal spirit. Abraham told us that the, uh, the theological name for that, in that dimension, before he came into time, he existed before time in the realm. Amen. And Abraham said, we call him then El Ella Elohim. We were answered for a better meaning, it means the word, the self existing one. Meaning that God existed for himself, by himself alone. Amen. But in this great entity or in this ball of spirits, but Abraham said that he had thoughts and what attributes. So all of these thoughts and attributes, they, they were in the mind of God. God had a purpose, God had something he wanted to achieve. And so what do we see? The first attribute of God that was expressed was the attribute of a word, of a creator of God. That's not right. Because the meaning of the word G-O-D means what? An object of what? Worship. So by Genesis 1, alright, okay, let's, let's take it like this. 
he existed as Elohim. Then from Elohim, he moved into what we call the Logos, which we refer to as what the Theophany of God. Amen. Now, at that point, this great being began to do what? Began to create things. We see from the scripture, Elohim began to speak things into existence. He said, let there be this, let there be that. And you see that the earth that Elohim was coming to be expressed into was without form and void. Amen. But Brother Abraham told us that there were already seeds already laying in the earth. And so what Elohim needed to do or what the Logos needed to do was to speak what? Light into existence. And so he started the work of what? Creation. Let there be light and there was light. And after he has brought the light, amen. And he said, let every seed produce after a kind now watch this it's a story now the story of a life and so elohim began to create things he made the animals he made the plants he made so many even made the angels and what were the angels created for they were created to worship is that not true so which means that if elohim has received the worship he needed there was no need to create you so the worship of angels were not good enough. It was not sufficient. It could not satisfy his longing, his desire. And so I can see Elohim saying, I'm going to make a masterpiece anyhow. And so we see at Genesis 1, 26, the scripture reads like this. It says, and God said, let us create. Is it the animals there? No one to answer me. Is it the animals you find there? Is it the plants? It's who? Man. So let us create man in the likeness of what? And in the image of what? Of God. So, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. So not in the likeness of the beasts. Not in the likeness of the animals. Not in the likeness of the plants. But you were created in the likeness of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, God said, I'm going to make a masterpiece. I want to create something after my image. After my likeness. And I see Elohim in Genesis 1.26 speak forth the word. The spirit man created. And I don't say, well, now I'm going to put the spirit man in the body to make it a real masterpiece. And you could see Elohim taking the, the sand, the clay, and he began to mold. And I can see Satan come. Lucifer. He said, Papa Elohim, what are you trying to do? Making a thing out of clay? What cannot achieve? But Satan missed it right there. Brother, you are not a thing of clay. You are a being, hallelujah, of eternity. Yeah. And so what was Elohim doing? He was molding. He was bringing forth his thoughts, his attributes that were in him. So while Elohim took that clay, he was molding you out of his thoughts. Yeah. And Satan missed it right there because it looked so, you know, it looked so common. It looked at something that was not even having a purpose. But Satan missed it right there. Because as God was designing that, what God was doing was extracting, was bringing forth the thoughts he had in him. You see, Job asked the question. He said, where were you where the sons of God shouted for joy? And nobody could answer Job. But praise be to God, we got the answer to that. You were in the thought of Elohim. Hallelujah. So the message declares to us the answers of the Bible. So it's not a mystery. I know where I came from. I'm not a being of time. I'm a being of eternity. You came from God. You go back to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And so we see now that this God, the purpose was there. What he wanted to achieve. Why he was going to make you. Amen. And God began to create and then he produced the man. And we see the purpose why he made the man. Is that they wanted the man to worship him. God wanted to receive a worship from a being that was according to his reflection. God wanted to receive worship from people that will understand the meaning of the word amazing grace. 
God wanted to receive worship from a people that will understand what, the, what is the meaning of the word redemption. And so, unlike Christ, from the logos down to the flesh, amen, but you bypass the use of your theophany body. And Brother Abraham said, you come like Adam. Amen. But he it came like Christ. Amen. So he came with his own theophany, his own body word. Hallelujah. And so we see that when this man that God created was expressed into time, and Brother Abraham said, who is the son of God? A son of God simply means the thought of God that is being expressed in its season. So you are a thought of God but a person. I'm a thought of God tonight. And I'm being expressed in my season. And in each of these seasons that you are being expressed, you have a purpose to achieve for God. And that is why until that purpose has been achieved, until that purpose, so sometimes some people will spend many years, you know, wasting their life because they are trying to run away from their purpose. But the earlier you realize that there is a purpose on my life, there's a purpose on your life, the better for you. And because some of our brothers and sisters are yet to realize that purpose, they, are, they, they don't understand that you are the celebrity of heaven. They don't understand that the world ought to copy from you. You begin to act like the world. Do like the world. Put on some mini skirts, put on some makeup, this and that. That was not why God created you, my brother. God created you as a masterpiece that He can look to you. Oh, my, I, I love this illustration. You know, Michelangelo, he received a great inspiration and he began to picture how Moses would have looked like. And you know what he did? After he created that, that sculpture, he looked at it, it was so real. And what did he do? He struck it at the kneecap. And Barabbas said, the world looked at that and said, this is rubbish. Barabbas said, that was what made that sculpture a masterpiece. And I'll prove to you, you also a masterpiece. Because after God created the man, hallelujah, Elohim looked at you and he said, receive ye the masterpiece right there. Masterpiece right there. Amen. So, and what was this masterpiece to do, brother? It was to manifest God on the earth. So, God told Adam, Adam, the beasts were created before you. The angels created before you. The plants created before you. But you know what? You are going to have dominion over everything. And Ron told us in the message, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. That God has a three-fold what? Purpose. Is that not true? So what's the first one? That God wanted to reveal himself to the people. Number two, he wanted to have preeminence in the body of the believers. And number two, what I'm going to now, that God wanted to restore the kingdom of what? That rightfully belonged to Adam. Because that kingdom was lost through the fall. And that was what made Satan to be able to have dominion over the man. So what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, brothers, was Adam lost the consciousness of who he was. And a man that's outside of Christ is a man that has lost the consciousness of who he is. So the Holy Ghost does not do so much for you. What the Holy Ghost comes to do is to anoint the seed of God that is in you to do what now? To awaken the consciousness that you are a son of God. And so all the message is trying to do, is trying to bring to you is that you can realize your purpose as a son of God and as a daughter of God. And if you can catch this tonight, I have a purpose for God. That I was not just created a tin of clay. I was not created to just, you know, walk this face of earth without doing anything. And that's why God sent for the prophet, Malachi 4, Revelation 10, 7, to show you as a type of who you are. And Brother Abraham was given as the first ship waver 
wave over the bride to show you and I this is what a restored son should do. And Brother Abraham walked this face of earth, a man of purpose, who knew why God created him, who knew his calling, who knew his purpose, and who saw what that purposeful man did. Amen. Amen. The story one time says, one time Brother Abraham walked into a clinic of deaf and dumb people. And the, and, and the story tells us that that day, that school was closed down. That was a man of purpose, my brother. I will take you back to the Old Testament now. You know, Brother Abraham says that the Alpha Church or the Omega Church, which we are, has got to perfectly type the Alpha Church. And God gave the Alpha Church a commission, Mark 16, 16. And he said, Well, let's read that scripture. Oh my. This is fresh now. The Mark 16 Church. Give me that scripture, Mark 16, 16. You know, we preach Mark 16, but I'm talking about the Mark 16 church in action. That church is in action even right now in Bible way. Yeah. It said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be done. Move further. And these signs shall follow them. Do they follow after the signs? No. What happens to the signs? The signs follow after them. So it's an error as a believer if the signs of God's word is not following after your life. Let me say that again. It's an error. Because right from the beginning, the purpose of God of bringing forth a man is that that man we have dominion. So if you don't have simple faith to pray for your headache, how will you have faith for the rapture? So we must, we must, we must be awakened by the word of God. And that's what I'm doing to mine by the same word. To judge your faith, sisters. To judge your faith, brothers. To realize your purpose. You are an amateur God. Amen. Brother Abraham said, date is not in heaven. Deity is on earth. But is deity in anywhere? No. Deity is in me. Praise the Lord. Deity is in you. And Brown said, when deity speak, omnipotent will do what? We respond. Brown said, it takes the miraculous to vindicate the omnipotent. Which means that if you have received the Holy Ghost, you got deity living in you. So if deity meets deity, what happened? The supernatural will take place. So we come to church expecting the supernatural. So you, you, got, you got a sickness in tonight's meeting. Deity speaking tonight. I'm going to put them to respond. The miraculous will happen. Amen. So we are looking at the purpose of God tonight. And what God needed to create you. And I say that God needed to create you. To bring you. To express you as a thought. He projected you from the thought realm into the physical and physical manifestation because he wanted you to be able to express him. Amen. So why you go to work, why you come to church, why you live in your family, the question tonight is, am I expressing God? Am I serving my purpose while I'm on earth? Or I'm serving another purpose? And maybe you are here tonight on that spiritual amnesia identification crisis I'm bringing to you tonight your true identification which is the word of the Lord and so sometimes it's funny when, we, when the word of God is being preached and the people they are struggling to say amen to the word but Abraham said your name is not John Dose your name is not Victor your name is not Tosi your name is not precious. What's your name? Your name is the word of God. And so, as I'm preaching tonight, what am I doing? I'm calling your name by the word. And if you can see your name in this world, hallelujah. Amen. No wonder one time, Brother Abraham was sharing the testimony of the word of God. Amen. And a woman called Sister Archie Wright was there. As the prophet was sharing that, she was in the kitchen, brother. But she heard her name being called. And she said, Brother Bram, that's exactly the truth. Because why? She heard her name being called. So you must rejoice at the word each time. 
Because your name is being called from the word of God. Amen. And so, God creates you. He gives you a purpose. And Psalm 16 verse 11 says that what? He will show you the path that you must walk. And God for this day has showed us the path we must walk in. I'm not to walk in the glare of some other message lights. I'm not to walk in some glare of Luther time. Not to walk in the glare of the Methodist. Not to walk in the glare of the Baptist. But I'm to walk in the light of this day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see, just the same way God has a purpose, a threefold purpose, Satan has a threefold purpose. John 10 10. Let me show you that. The Bible said the thief coming to do what? Do you see that? The threefold purpose of Satan. And so all Satan does, number one, to steal your what? Your joy. To steal your confidence. To steal your faith. And when he does that, then he can kill you. Spiritually. And that was what he did in the Garden of Eden. When he met Eve, what he wanted to do was to steal a confidence that she had the trust, the faith that she had in Adam. Remember that Eve never received the commandment directly. She received the commandment from Adam. So if God is to be speaking in the homes, the right channel should be the priest of that home, which is the husband. And from God to the man and then to the wife. But today the order is being changed. Why? Because of some feminist demons in the camp. But the word of God tells us that feminist demon is not the word of God. It's anti-world. So sister, run away from that influence. You must be submissive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You must submit yourself to the head of the man. And we are, we are going to balance that. But the mom said that the man himself must be able to live such a life in the home that will make submission so easy. So you must live, husbands, you must live in the home as a son of God. And we know that so many husbands these days have, have, have become so influenced with the many different things of the world. You know, just the same way, you know, social media has become, let me put it like this, it has become the the word of God for so many women, the same way it has become the word of God for so many men. But the word of God tonight calls you for repentance. That you should look into the scripture. But man said, we have received the remedy for all things. The remedy for marriage, the remedy for Christian living, the remedy for job, the remedy for everything. All you need, brother, is to learn to realize your purpose as a son of God. And there's only one thing that can give you that purpose. And what is that? Revelation. The Holy Spirit tonight. And if the Holy Spirit comes into your hearts, it will show you. That is why you see Psalm 16 verse 11 say He will show you the path of life. So stop stop crafting out your own path. Stop trying to stop, stop trying to mold your own path for yourself. Because for a start you never created yourself. You got a creator. He created you. And he has already ordained a path through which you must walk. Amen. Amen. And so we see that God even has a purpose for today. But the Bible says that the message we are believing, he said, this is the program of God for this day. Amen. To take it more further, but Abraham said that this is the presence of God. Amen. That this message you are believing is the presence of God. So it was necessary for God to 
bring forth a prophet for this day that can show to the believers the purpose of God. So you don't need to shortchange yourself. Don't look out there. Don't look here and there. Stay with the word. Ramon said in the message, preparation. He said, many times, the believers, they live thousands and thousands of miles below their God-given privileges. Below your God-given privileges. Because you want to change yourself. The message is too, you know, the message is too old. You know, the message is too tough. It's too hard. You want some, some modernized gospel. Some social gospel. You know, I used to have a, a word. I call some believers. I call them social believers. I call them social believers because they are the ones that, you see, they want to be believers at the same time, they want to be like the world. I'm not saying you cannot be social, no. But I'm saying that, that your sociality must never exclude the word of God. Which means your sociality must stop where the word of God stops. Amen. Amen. So your redemption wasn't cheap. But the Bible says it took the blood of God to save you. Amen. And why must God do this thing? Because he had a threefold purpose which he wanted to bring to you. So God has a purpose for saving you. You would have wondered, why would God save one woman in the city of Jericho by name Rahab? I know I, I, I was looking at this woman, Rahab, in the Bible. You know, Bradley talked about Rahab today. The Gentile always associated to the program of God. Rahab, Ruth, and then you have the Gentile bride. Amen. Now I was looking at Rahab. You see, Rahab in that time, a type of the Gentile bride. There was a Joshua in the land, which Brother Abraham told us is the type of the Holy Spirit. Now Joshua sent messengers, what the Bible called them spies, to go spy the land. Is that not true? And when they were done spying the land, they were to return back. So you see, sometimes God will bring adversity, challenges, obstacle, struggle, because he has a purpose for just a seed of God. And then the, the government of Jericho heard that there were spies in the land that have come to spy the land. And we find out that God divinely directed the path of these spies to Rahab. And when they were there, they began to share the testimony of the message with Rahab to tell her what God is doing. That God has promised them this land, the promised land. They began to share the promise of God for that day. And Rahab, a Gentile bride, and she looked at everything and she said, Amen to everything. And for all she did, she brought the spice and she eat them in her home. And for that single heart, we realize that Rahab was saved. But you, but you, you would take notes now that it was not just only Rahab that was saved. Note not this very, very, very clearly that the, the family of Rahab, they were not even part of what Rahab believed. But because when God, Brahm said, when God saves a man, amen, it, number one, when God saves you, it saves your soul, it gives you divine healing, and more, it also saves your household. So the promise is for you and your household. Amen. You might have an unbelieving boy, an unbelieving girl. You know, your, your children might be so adamant. You might have done your best. You might have done all you can do to try to bring the gospel to them. And it seems to be full time. But I want to tell you tonight, just keep holding on. There is a promise for them that you and your household shall be saved. You know, purpose is such a great thing. Now, if we understand what purpose is, that that purpose will preserve you. Amen. Have you studied the life of David? David was a purposeful child. From the beginning of his birth, he was elected by God. Is that not true? Amen. And we see that David had 
so much obstacles, so much challenges, so much difficulties, that at the point it looks as if David was going to give up. Yet, that was the seed of God. That was an elected man. That was the man that God said, David, a man after my own heart. And David had so many challenges. Maybe you are here tonight. The challenges you are going through. The obstacles facing you. And the devil is ministering to you. It's because God does not love you. I want to tell you by the word. You are going through those things because God actually loves you. Yes. It looks hard, but it's the truth of God's word. The purpose of David preserved him. I mean the struggle. I mean the obstacle. I mean the challenges he was going through. And this is what I'm trying to bring to you tonight. That by your divine purpose, you will be preserved. By your divine purpose, you will make the rapture. By the divine purpose, death has no victory over you. The believer, hallelujah, has rights, overcoming power, overcoming grace, over death. So death is only a servant and a tool to change our dimension. So we must never be afraid of death. Amen. So now, what is the reason why God made you in his own image? It's simple. God has made everything and he wanted to receive worship from a people of appreciation. From a people. So, don't limit or don't, don't cheat God of his worship. So, God is more... You know, the angels, they sing Holy Believe, Hallelujah, Hosanna, all of those things. And if that was what God actually wanted, He has no need to make you an eye. So, sirs, God is more excited, more happy when you wake up in the morning and you say, Amazing grace. Oh, sing Hallelujah. That brings God down. So, God is excited. God is happy. There's great rejoicing in heaven. And that's how you see. When the seven seals were to be opened, amen. Let's check that quickly. Rev- Revelation 5. I'm winding down. My Revelation 5, I want to show you something. Okay. 5 verse 1. Now I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seeds thereof? There is a reason why the seeds needed to be opened. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And John said what? I wept much. But you are not weeping again. Because at the end of these seals, when the seals were opened, John said what? I rejoice greatly because the seals have been opened. Amen. And so we come to church to enjoy the benefits of the revealed word. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to do what? To rejoice at the word of God. Because God had a purpose. Amen. So God has a what? A purpose. And your purpose, sir, your purpose, ma, is that you were created to bring worship, adoration, thanks, praise to God. So don't shortchange yourself by failing to give God what belongs to Him. I want to read some quotes quickly. Pardon me. All right. From the message Shalom, preach 1964. I read from paragraph 67. Just something there quickly. Now, a few months ago, I preached for a series of meetings at the tabernacle on the seven church ages. 
you perhaps all have heard them and when I finish drawing out on the blackboard the seven church ages how the light come in and how the light went out and I guess you have that perhaps perhaps yes somewhere but it's among us anyhow we know and the strange thing on the last day when the last church age was drawn out this great pillar of fire which is among us even now came down among hundreds of people and took itself back to the back wall of the tabernacle and there before this hundred draw those those church ages darkening and lightning just exactly the way I had drawn it on the board now watch this but before he broke forth those seven seals to reveal them he showed miraculously he showed it first in the heavens I believe we heard that this morning from the picture sorry he showed it first in the heaven that day they took pictures across southern United States and Mexico there it's hung now in the life magazine see a mystery to them but unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom but he declares it in the heaven first is a vindication up there a sign before he does it on the earth he always does that why he shows his signs in the heaven first so God had a purpose why he brought forth the revelations of the seven seals this, this, this revelation is not meant to be hidden under the bush here. this revelation is meant to be fed to the bride of Christ and that's what Revelation 10 8 John as a type of the bride she, he was commissioned to feed from that revelation why? because John has got to prophesy before nations so we must take the revelation that Malachi 4 has turned that out unto us. Amen. Quickly, I want to read the quote again. Sorry for taking time. Alright. Number one speaking here on purpose from the message The Grace and the Light, paragraph 15. It said, But it gives us consolation to know this that we do not hold our destiny. You don't hold your purpose. There is somebody that haunts you. Amen. You say, God holds our destiny. So it's a divine purpose, brother. And he has ordained it to be so. And there is nothing, nothing, my brother, that we ever interrupt the program of God. The brother said, we are born to arrive. So God has a program, a purpose, amen, for every generation. Even in your life, he has a purpose for everything he does. And that purpose can never be defeated. But I said the purpose of God can never be defeated. So when you find your purpose, stay in that purpose and God would bless you. In closing, in closing, I hope God is, is speaking to you. I want to almost share something quickly. In closing, but around speaking, we have told us that you have a purpose, that God wanted you to be a masterpiece, to be his reflection. And that's why he never made any of those other creation according to his image. There was only one being that was special enough to be created in the image and the likeness of God. And that was what? The man. And we see Balaam telling us in the message, Christ, the mystery of God revealed the threefold purpose of God, which has always had in his mind what he wanted to do. Amen. And we see that Adam 
the first man lost that purpose. Amen. And I told us that what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden was the consciousness of who he is. He lost his purpose. Amen. But Christ Jesus came to do what? To reveal, to restore back that purpose to you. Amen. Now watch this. Remember speaking here? He said, he is the word. So when a spirit born, spirit healed man, in faith, takes that word into his heart and place it upon his lip. You can place that word upon your lips tonight. Why? That is the same as deity speaking. Every mountain has got to go. Satan cannot stand before that man. And Satan tonight cannot stand before you. You have a purpose. You are ordained by God. You are God master speaks. You can speak the word and go forward. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. As the instrumentalists begin to play that song for us, Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace, as sweet the sound. I just want us to worship God, realizing that we are not just beings of time, that we existed with God way before the world was ever created, before there were angels, before even Lucifer ever came on earth, that you were already an existing entity. In hello, he mind. Is that not great, my brother? To know that you are not going to end one day. Time is not your own ending, but you will exist even when time is no longer. Because you came from God, you are going back to God. This should gladden our heart to realize that we are restored people, we are a privileged people that God has sent for His world to remind us again tonight, to give us faith, to give us an understanding that we are sons of God. Masterpiece tonight. God is still in the best of making masterpiece, sisters. Brother, you can still be a masterpiece. You can quit your sin. You can quit your struggle. You can quit those filthy things. You can come here tonight. Acts 2, 38. And as many that receive the word, repent and be baptized, and they, they will receive the remissions of the sin and they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you here tonight in need of the Spirit of God? You are struggling, you are trying to live above this world. Tonight, grace is made available because you are realizing your purpose tonight. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, that you can take this world anoint in the heart of your children, in the believers, Lord. For us to be awakened, Lord. We see what the church needs today, Lord. Is an old St. Paul's is a fire revival again. The revival of Malachi 4. To be quick in our heart again. That we are no Lord. That we are impossible with people. We are not just living anyhow. You have a purpose why you created me and them. That we can shine for the light of God. A royal priesthood. A chosen generation. That we can shine for the light of God for this day. I want to talk to the Lord. Why not you appreciate him? Why not you bless his name? Why not you begin to go back and begin to think on your purpose on earth? Oh dear Jesus, let this word just go. Let it be mixed with faith. Let it anoint the heart of your people that they can see that they are in the world. There are promises of God made manifest. Your thought for this day being expressed as sons and daughters of God. Take that word into your heart. Place it on your lips by faith and speak tonight. The mountains we go, situation will change because your purpose is in the word of the Lord. The Lord bless you as I invite God's servant tonight. Amen.
there's still a depth to go and there's a height to climb oh for grace tonight to discover our purpose we didn't create ourselves so we cannot fashion a purpose for our lives it takes the creator to develop to, to design a purpose it takes a manufacturer of a product to design the purpose it is to serve so what we are going to do is not to design one or develop one for ourselves or to find out what you have designed for us oh god we don't want to live many wasted years we want to turn around we want a victory we want to be brought into the channel of your thoughts Oh God, that we might be able to see the picture of your program for our life. And their walk, oh God, in your blessings. Because it is only your thoughts that you will back up. Oh God, help us, Master. Touch the heart tonight. If there be those still in a state of confusion. Oh God, or in a situation where they don't know where to turn, what to do. Father, we take a pause this evening and just ask that you might reveal thyself. Let your finger point to your divine direction. Give us victory. Give us peace, O oh God. Give us your joy. Joy, it's in knowing that we are doing the right thing. Give us that joy. Bless your children tonight. The week is ahead of us. O oh God, may you go before us. Oh, may you clear our pathway. Teach us the path of life. As an individual, reveal thyself to us on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Be with us, Father. We thank you for Johnny Messes. You granted to your servant and his family. Brother Habe, thank you for bringing them back safely. We pray for many more, oh God, that you will remember them. Pastor Israel James will be coming to Lagos tomorrow for his flight on Tuesday with the wife. May you undertake for them. Undertake for all your children in their activities. Brought to you also from Abuja Epim, Lord. We are asking, O oh God, for that emergency case once again, that you will come on the scene. For Mr. Remigius will be, O oh God, and break the tempter's power. If you are not true with him, Lord, may you arise unto his rescue and give him victory touch all your people we pray oh god those who need healing may you grant baptism of the holy ghost may you release divine intervention may you come break the tempter's power dismiss us with your blessings we thank you for your servant whom you have used we pray that you will refill him also teach him by yourself increase him enlarge him be with the rest of your servants be with the church, O oh God. Every family tonight, may your blessing rest. Amen. Our children are on vacation. May you bless their time of holiday. Oh, refresh them. Keep them safe. Keep them happy. When they will return to school, may there be no one missing among them. All that the parents will have needs to provide for them, may you supply. Amen. We pray for all the programs that are ahead of us. May you undertake the program of the uh, bro on the, 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 the family on Tuesday, Wednesday, may you see them true. That of the Madukas, may you make a way. Bless your people, Lord. If there are other individual programs of your children that they are putting before you, Father, remember them. Some of your children are trusting you for accommodation. May you make the choice for them. The right place, and may you make a way, oh God. Thank you, Father. On Wednesday, we want to be back in your presence. Please make it possible. Those of us traveling undertake for us. 
be with the believers, O God. Till then, keep us in fellowship with you and with one another as we commit ourselves into thy care in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Fight your battles. Meet you at the point of your needs. And keep us all in the hollow of his arms. Is that tell it to the righteous? It is well with them. It is well with you all.